In example five, we're gonna do another example of average rate of change, but we're gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna give you a new function and we're just gonna compute the average rate of change of the function between two x values. We won't do anything with secant line in this example, okay? So example five, consider the function g of x is equal to x cubed minus two x plus one. Find the average rate of change of g from x equals 1 to x equals 3. Okay, so first thing to notice, we are interested in this function between these x values. Okay, so the part of the function between x equals 1 and x equals 3. Okay, now remember what we learned in example 4. Average rate of change is nothing more than the slope formula. Okay, it is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, we have the two x values. Okay, so this is going to be the x1. This is going to be the x2, but we are missing the y1 and the y2. So remember, how do you get it? You take each of these x values and you plug each into the function. Okay, so let's do that first. That's where you need to start. Okay, so let's first take uh, x equals 1, okay, um, and plug this x value into the function. Okay, so we're going to get g of 1 is going to be 1 cubed minus 2 times 1 plus 1. Okay, let's simplify. This is going to be 1 minus 2 plus 1. That's going to be 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 1. That is going to give us zero, okay? And then we need to do the same thing. Well, actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and write this as an ordered pair, okay? We just realized from this that if you plug in x equals one, the output is going to be zero, okay? So now we can go ahead and say this is our x1 and this is our y1 that goes with it, okay? And now we'll do the same thing for the x value three, okay? Let's plug it into the function g of 3 is going to be 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 plus 1, okay? So 3 times 3 times 3, that's going to be 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, minus 6 plus 1, that is going to be 27 minus 6 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So we're going to write this as an ordered pair. We just plugged in an x value of 3 and we got an output of 22. Okay, so this is going to be our second ordered pair. We'll go ahead and call this x2, y2. And now to get the average rate of change, we just need to apply the slope formula to these two points. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and calculate the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so again, that's the slope formula, which is the same thing as the average rate of change. Okay, I usually just abbreviate it AROC. Okay, so here we go. Let's calculate it. Okay, so average rate of change, we need to do y2 minus y1 in the numerator. Okay, so look how I've got my points labeled. y2 is going to be 22 and y1 is going to be 0. Okay, so that's going to be 22 minus 0 in the numerator. The denominator is x2 minus x1. Okay, so again, I've got my coordinates labeled here. So this is going to be three minus one. Okay. So we just simplify to get a number. Average rate of change will always be a number. Okay. Because again, it's a slope. Okay. So this is going to be 22 over two. The answer is 11. Okay. The average rate of change of this function between x equals one and x equals three is 11. Okay, again, if you're trying to understand what this means visually, okay, if you were to graph out this function g of x and you looked at the points, uh, the ordered pairs 1, 0 on the graph and 3, 22 on the graph, if you took those two points on your curve and you drew a line between those two points, the slope of that line is going to be 11.